Hi everyone and welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim tutorial. In today's video we're going to step through the pre-flight preparations I complete both in real life and when I stream to you guys live on this channel. I hope you find it interesting and I hope it's something you could perhaps use to make your virtual flight run as smoothly as possible. Please don't forget, like with all my tutorials, the guidance here is purely for desktop simulator use and for your entertainment only. Now prior to operating a duty there are several things that need to be checked both before and when you arrive at the aircraft. Now most of this is covered during the pilot's briefing, but a lot of it could be checked at home. Thankfully in these modern times, pretty much all the information you need to review prior to operating can be found in the electronic fly bag or EFB for short. Now we have a useful app on our EFB which is an electronic flight log and on this you can find all the information for the sectors you're flying that day. Important information such as your crew members, your flight numbers for the sectors you're flying, your call signs, departure and destination with scheduled departure and arrival times, what stand the aircraft is parked on or will be parked on, any delays such as slots, the estimated amount of passengers and the aircraft registration. On the app we can click on each individual sector and it provides all the information we need to complete the flight safely. Now unfortunately most of you don't have the luxury of an airline's electronic flight bag but there are some fantastic tools and applications for flight sim users which can be used to check everything I'd be checking in real life too. So once you've decided the sector you want to fly it's time to load into the sim but there's still a number of things which need to be reviewed prior to operating. Now for this tutorial we're simulating a flight from Copenhagen to London Gatwick and we'll be applying all the things we need to review based on the current weather conditions and forecast conditions at the time of recording. I'd be checking all the apps on my electronic flight bag to make sure I'm happy with everything prior to departure but instead we'll cover how you could utilise some apps, Simbrief, Navigraph and Vatsim pilot briefings to find all the required information for this sector. So to summarise everything we need to check pre-flight, I've divided it into three convenient groups. The first will be the aircraft, the second will be airports, and then the third will be route. Let's firstly take a look at aircraft. So when it comes to aircraft, the first category we're looking at, what is it I'm actually looking for? Well the first thing is actually, where on earth is it? Is it running behind schedule? And where is it flying from? Because there might be additional security checks which might need to be completed if it's flying from certain countries, or perhaps the aircraft's been in long-term maintenance in an unprotected hangar. We could also remotely see the technical status of the aircraft, so if there's any defects we can review the MEL to see if there's any operational impacts. We should always still check the tech log though once we get on the aircraft as any other further defects might have been added prior to being updated electronically. We also want to see if the aircraft has any scheduled maintenance tasks and have all the required scheduled maintenance tasks prior to operating being completed satisfactorily and legally. Now in a desktop simulator you have the beauty of spawning the aircraft wherever you wish and save for the knowledge that nothing will break down but you can still simulate a few inoperative items in many high quality add-ons for that added challenge. So we're happy with where the aircraft is and that it's fully serviceable and all the technical checks have been completed. Now let's have a look at airports. Now the first thing I check is the weather at our point of departure, arrival, en route and destination alternates. Now our electronic flight pack generates all the weather that's required but you can still review the meta on TAF easily enough online. We're looking for anything that could potentially impact the operation, such as storms, low visibility, strong winds or cold weather related disruption. Now if weather conditions are poor at our departure airport, we might need a takeoff alternate which must be within one hour's flight time with one engine operative. If weather is poor at our destination, we also need to ensure that we have at least two suitable alternates and that we have the required planning minima for these alternates as well. So when flying in the sim and you see prior to departure the forecast weather could pose a problem at your destination, make sure you have somewhere you could safely divert to. Having checked the weather, next we want to review the NOTAMs. Now what is a NOTAM? A NOTAM is a notice to airmen. It's a way of alerting flight crew of any potential hazards, closures or inoperative equipment that might impact the operation of your flight. Things such as runway and taxiway closures, inoperative approach aids or temporary obstacles want to be checked prior to dispatch. So once we've checked the weather and any applicable NOTAMs, we then have a review of the airport's airfield briefing. And what the airfield briefing is, it's a company produced document which contains important information for pilots regarding the airport you're operating at. 
Now, thankfully, there are many excellent briefs available online. For example, we can see here Vatsib Scandinavia have made a pilot's guide for operating at Copenhagen Airport, which is actually very similar in comparison to my operators. And in this, you'll find lots of useful information for operating, in this case, at Copenhagen. So some other things I'd be reviewing in reality, which you might not necessarily be able to in your desktop simulator, is is there any special engine out SIDs or emergency turn procedures at our departure point, which is a specific routing we'd fly in the event of an engine failure after we've won. And lastly, we'd also review the takeoff and landing performance dispatch requirements, making sure that we can both depart from our origin and land at our destination safely. So having looked at the airports in detail, the weather, no TAMs, and the briefing, let's lastly have a look at our route. So when it comes to routing, everything is pretty much covered in the operational flight plan. Let's bring it up here for you to see. Firstly, I would review the fuel requirements for the sector, and if there'd be any requirement to carry additional fuel due to any disruption. Fuel essentially equals time. So if we could see there were thunderstorms at our destination, I'd potentially take around an extra 30 minutes. And in the 737, we burn conservatively 2.4 tonnes an hour, so we'd add on 1,200 kilos on top of our block fuel. We could also review and prepare or get out our expected charts, so the aerodrome, apron, taxi and planned SID star charts can all be reviewed prior to operating so you have a rough idea of what to expect. Of course, runway directions, SID stars can change at short notice, but at least you've had a look at what you can expect for the particular sector. It's also worthwhile checking the full route, so you're also familiar with the area you're flying over, as you'd also need to know where it would be a suitable airport in the case of diversion uh, due to, say, a medical emergency or a technical problem. Now we've already checked the weather and no tams at the departure destination and en route alternates earlier, but we still need to review the significant weather charts and no tams for any potential issues en route. The operational flight plan also contains information such as Mora, which could be above 10,000 feet, and is the altitude you'd want to descend to in the event of an emergency descent. We can also review any shears, which are areas we can also expect turbulence. Now, if you're interested, I have covered all the information presented already in the operational flight plan in a Lido operational flight plan tutorial, which should now be linked above. Right then, well, I've pretty much covered everything I'd be reviewing prior to duty, and I hope you found it interesting and learned something new, and perhaps it'll add a little bit more realism to your home flight sim experience. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like, and if you'd like to stay up to date with the latest content, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to turn on notifications so you're alerted when I've uploaded a new video or planned to stream. Fly safe, and I'll see you all again very soon. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs>